The key to compliance is the ANSI APSB7 Suction Entrapment Checklist. By inspecting step-by-step -step to this standard, your poor spa will automatically comply with the new federal law. How do we know that the ANSI APSP7 is the right choice? The answer is that this standard has undergone more technical scrutiny than any national standard in the history of the pool industry. It continues to be reviewed and improved, but stands as the single most comprehensive suction entrapment avoidance standard to date. But a checklist or a standard is only as good as those that are willing to inspect with it. Most entrapments happen because of human errors. Here is a great example of how insidious these mistakes can be. This pool and spa was the backdrop of a February 2009 pool and spa safety conference in Florida. Notice the flat, non-compliant cover and the rusted screws. And one must ask a simple question. While everyone is promoting safety products, who is inspecting the pool? In this case, the pool had a non-compliant cover. The gutters were inoperable due to low water level. No skimming was occurring on this public pool. And in this particular state, Florida, not all of the options given by the new federal law, including elimination of the hazard, are allowed. We must push for all states to allow all options under the new Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Safety Act. Let's just take a minute to review the suction entrapment hazards from another viewpoint the ability to back up as required by the new federal law. Hair entrapment occurs due to knotted hair in the cover from excessive flow rate. There is no backup. Body suction entrapment is the best understood and the focus of most media attention. It can be easily backed up with dual outlets, SVRS, vents, and gravity drainage. All of these address this form of entrapment. Limb entrapment has occurred with the pump on or off. There is no backup for a stuck limb. Evisceration or disembowelment happens in less time than it takes to blink an eye. There is no backup. And mechanical is unpredictable. There's also no backup. Because backup works very rarely, it's imperative that a securely installed and operational suction outlet cover be in place at all times. So let's review the underlying causes of entrapment and find that hair is caused by excessive flow rate through the cover, not suction, and it's the most common form of reported entrapment cases. Suction and flow are also involved in evisceration and body entrapment. But less than one-third of all reported cases are body entrapment, where the form of entrapment can actually be backed up. Limb can involve mechanical, suction, or flow rate, and has happened on several occasions with the pump off. Once the limb is stuck, Releasing the vacuum is no guarantee of releasing the victim. The take home from this is to understand that a properly tested and secured cover must be in place for a suction outlet to be safe. Backups would not have necessarily been effective in 67% of all reported entrapment hazards. The US CPSC has released a guide to compliance with the new federal law. Here are examples of a pool with water features that meet the CPSC staff recommendations. Notice the complexity of the water features and the size of this resort pool. The real question is why is this pool within staff recommendations? The answer is what's not in the pool. This pool is built with no drains and uses overflows to support water features and circulation turnover. The guidelines state CPSC staff recommends that to eliminate and not just mitigate the drain entrapment hazard in pools and spas, 
Pool owners should disable old drains or build new pools without any drains and use gutters, overflows, and skimmers to provide water to the pump. Even though most state laws correctly attribute proper circulation to pool turnover and location of return inlets, many codes require a potential hazard simply to drain a pool. And yet, as an industry, we typically don't use the circulation equipment to drain pools. So let's take a quick look at pool circulation using drain disablement. First of all, pool circulation can be properly achieved with the Virginia Graham Baker Act option of drain disablement. Computational fluid dynamic studies have confirmed what most state codes support, that pool turnover and the location of return inlets are the primary drivers for pool circulation and distribution of sanitizer. Proper turnover can be tested using the AquaCal TDH test kit to measure whether skimmers or gutters are installed properly and have sufficient water to meet the required pool turnover rate. Most states mandate that gutters support 100% of the design system flow, and ANSI public pool standards require that skimmers also support 100% of the design system flow. This is not always a solution, but the pool industry and health and building state officials should be aware of it and allow it as an option on all public and residential pools. It's absurd to arbitrarily eliminate this option in the new federal law and require a potential hazard and then mandate one be protected from the potential hazard with a backup. Some might insist that drains are necessary for debris removal. But unless a properly installed in-floor cleaning system is present, which sweeps debris, as shown in this video, into a drain designed to remove it, then it's unlikely the debris will be removed by the drain alone. To test this, simply leave a pool with a drain that doesn't have an in-floor cleaning system present, unvacuumed for several weeks, and the answer will be self-evident. The drain itself does not remove debris. In a second video, this involves a single 18 by 18 cover powered by these two pumps, and it's capable of nearly 800 gallons a minute of flow. Now keeping in mind that there's only 11 inches of water over this single 18 by 18 grate, what do you think would happen if dye is introduced over the outlet? The answer may surprise you. Even the flow rate is extreme. In this case, 800 gallons per minute through a single 18 by 18 cover, only 11 inches deep. The dye is barely affected by the flow. Drains do not cause circulation. They provide water to the pump and the return inlets circulate the pool. Imagine now the lower flow rates with the new energy efficiency law sweeping the country. How could anyone believe that 5, 10, or even 50 gallons per minute is going to contribute significantly to circulation in the bottom of a 5 or 10 foot deep pool given this effect with 800 gallons a minute in a single outlet with only 11 inches of water. When compared to this volume of water, the effect is going to be negligible. Suction entrapment avoidance is a simple choice, and together we can make pools safer. As a closing thought, you might want to reflect on this pool at a Kentucky apartment complex in the summer of 2008. The approximately 30,000 gallon pool required a little over 80 gallons a minute to properly circulate the water. There are four skimmers, each required by state law to have at least 30 gallons a minute of flow. It had a single and unnecessary drain that had not been properly maintained. Kids were observed to have been playing with the cover like a Frisbee weeks earlier. On this particular night, 14-year-old Kaya Milsom snuck out with her friends into the pool as teenagers have done for years. But on this night, 
while searching for a lost bracelet. Time ran out. It took rescue workers nearly 30 minutes to free her, and her arm had to be fractured in several places to be removed. Kaya died a few days later for much of the same reason that Abigail Taylor died in a waiting pool in Minnesota, or the potential problems we found in the shadow of a safety conference in Florida. A state-mandated, unnecessary, and improperly maintained drain cover. Do your part and inspect all suction outlets to the new ASME and ANSI APSP standard. Make all pools safe, whether required to or not. If you have additional questions or comments, you can visit our website at propoolinspection.com or send an email to support at propoolinspection.com.